Hello again everyone and welcome to another Sunday online service from St Helens Church. My name's Jamie, I'm the Ordinand in training at St Helens and I'm going to be leading us through this time of online worship today. Now many of you may well know today is the fourth Sunday in Advent so we're going to be thinking about Mary today and continuing to think about preparing the way for Jesus coming. So our passage today is from Luke chapter 1 verses 39 to 55 and Karen is going to be sharing her thoughts uh, on the passage a little later and what God has been saying to her in her reflections. So we're going to hear our reading in a little while uh, but before we do and before we join together in our first worship song let's pray. Heavenly Father we thank you so much for your son Jesus Christ. We thank you that you sent him to earth to save us, that we may know you and have hope. We thank you, Lord, for Mary, that she, in her faith and obedience, played such an important role in your unfolding plan. And Lord, we pray that as we open your word today and uh, listen to all that you have to say to us, we pray that by your Holy Spirit, you help us to truly understand and to grow ever closer to you. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, do join in at home with our first song this morning, the candle song. At that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? 
As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. As I begin, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word to us. Thank you to, that it speaks to us afresh across the generations. Lord, speak to our hearts afresh today as we look into your word. May we find new encouragement and hope for us at this Christmas time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Those of you who follow our services week by week will know that last week we were looking at the story of John the Baptist preparing the way for Jesus. And this week we're looking at two women who also had a big part to play in preparing the way for Jesus coming, Mary and Elizabeth. Just before the portion of scripture read to us, the angel Gabriel had appeared to Mary and given her the news that she was the one, the one who'd been chosen to be the birth mother of Messiah. We can assume that Mary was maybe only 14 years old, the age at which in that culture women became engaged or betrothed to be married. But Mary shows incredible maturity when she is faced with the biggest decision of her life. She doesn't doubt. She checks out the details. How can this be since I am only a virgin? And when she has been reassured that the child to be born will be conceived by God's Holy Spirit, her answer is, here am I, let it be to me according to your word. An act of commitment, of trust, that would change Mary's life forever. But who to tell, who to share this momentous news with? Who will believe her and not just say, you've imagined it, it's too fanciful, must have been a dream. How encouraging then for the young Mary that she is led to visit her older relative, Elizabeth, someone who's described in the Bible as getting on in years, and yet who also miraculously is pregnant and expecting a child who will become John the Baptist. Who better to encourage Mary to hear about the vision of the angel and what has been said and to share this momentous news. How encouraging Elizabeth's words must have been. She calls Mary, you who are blessed among women and you are the mother of my Lord. When God has intervened in our lives, perhaps sometimes even in a miraculous way, it's easy afterwards to begin to doubt the truth, the veracity of what's happened. And after the angel had left Mary, it would have been easy for her to think, is this really happening to me? 
Are the angel's words really going to come true? Or was it just a figment of my imagination? But here, with Elizabeth, Mary gets her confirmation. It is true. Elizabeth tells her that the child in her womb leapt for joy at the sound of Mary's greeting. The child that Mary will bear is to be special and more than special. He's to be the long-awaited one, the Messiah, the Lord. And there follows then a wonderful song of praise. And this is a song which is sung by choirs all around the world to this day as part of Evensong and said by all those who follow the Church of England daily prayer. The Magnificat called that after the opening phrase Mary uses, my soul magnifies the Lord. Mary then was overwhelmed by the favour which God showed in choosing her to be the mother of his son. She's given power and insight by the Holy Spirit to see and understand something of how God is working in the world in her day. How he turns everything upside down from the way that the world would have it or the way that the world does things. And we take a closer look at this song. Mary says, he has looked with favour on me, his lowly servant. God hasn't chosen a rich princess living in a palace to be the birth mother of his son. We know from elsewhere in the Bible that God looks on the heart. He wasn't interested in outward show, how it would look from a worldly point of view. Instead, he chooses someone of integrity, someone who was ready to obey and to trust. The song, the Magnificat, goes on to say that God scatters the proud. He brings down the mighty from their thrones, but lifts up the humble and meek. The song is full of Old Testament imagery and phrases, from the Psalms and from the prophet Isaiah. Could be that Mary knew these scriptures well, or again, that the Holy Spirit was giving her the words to say, he has filled the hungry with good things, but the rich he has sent away empty. These are all signs of God's upside down kingdom. Signs that whenever and wherever his kingdom breaks through, the usual order of things will be reversed. Those who are lowly, who are humble and ready to serve, are to be first in God's kingdom. And those who are proud and self-seeking will be brought down low. It takes the eyes of faith to look at the world in this way because as yet we don't see God's kingdom come in all its fullness. Wickedness and evil often seem to have the upper hand, don't they? And those who are humble can get trampled on. And of course, as we know, Mary's joy would turn into immense sadness and sorrow. This is foretold early on in the Gospel accounts when Jesus is presented as a baby in the temple. Simeon, an elderly man who had been waiting for the coming of the Messiah, came up to Mary and Joseph. He said that the child was destined to spark opposition and that a sword would pierce Mary's own soul. Being chosen, being called, and being obedient to that call didn't make for an easy life for Mary. It was to be a life 
marked by trouble and by sorrow. We can only imagine her growing concern as she watched opposition growing toward Jesus and towards his message during the three short years of his earthly ministry. Her anguish of soul when he was sentenced to death and led away to be crucified. This, her eldest son, in whom so much hope had been placed, tortured and killed. My soul magnifies the Lord. Did those early words of joy, of exultation and of longing come back to haunt Mary in her darker times? Or maybe did they keep her going until the time when she met again her resurrected son? See, although Mary had such an important part to play in God's story, a pivotal role, there were bigger things at stake here. She was blessed indeed to be the mother of God's son, but at the end of the day, it wasn't simply and just about her. Yes, she was an integral part of God's big story, but what she brought into being was also taken away from her. And maybe you know something of that this Christmas, the pain of losing someone that you have loved, the pain of being a parent when parenting has become hard and difficult, or you have even suffered the pain of losing a child. Mary knew that pain. In God's upside down world, joy and pain exist side by side. Those of you who were in church last Sunday will remember the talk by James Pacey, who was a hospital chaplain, saw much of illness and pain and death, and as he said, not much of joy. And yet, and yet, God's love does break through. As he said, joy isn't the same as happiness. Joy comes from God. And we can know moments of joy, even in situations of great sadness and of pain. Because joy comes from knowing that we are loved by our Heavenly Father, whatever our outward circumstances. Joy, J-O-Y, Jesus first, others next, and yourself last. Something I was taught at Sunday school. Mary's song, The Magnificat, reminds us that God's mercy lasts for all time, from generation to generation, and his promise is sure for those who fear him. So let's not let our focus then become narrow and guided by what the world tells us and what we hear on the news. Let's maintain our God focus. Whether we're experiencing joy or pain, love or loss, let's remember that God loves us, his love is steadfast, his promises are sure for all those who fear him and who, like Mary, choose to put their trust in him afresh this Christmas. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who died for us and who lives forever to intercede for us. Amen. Just as Israel waited and longed for the promised Saviour, our world today waits desperately, though unknowingly, for that Saviour, to exalt the unimportant and feed the hungry, to show mercy and compassion, to restore dignity. 
Heavenly Father, we pray that this Christmas time, many in our needy world will be drawn to Jesus, Saviour of the world, for the first time through the work of your Holy Spirit. Thank you that Jesus came to our world and grew up in humble circumstances so that none would feel excluded. Bless this world with the knowledge of your inexhaustible love, your deep, consuming compassion, your salvation through the gift of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We pray for our nation as 2021 draws to a close. A nation divided socially, politically, racially. And ask you, Lord, to unite us in a shared vision for this land. One which embraces difference and values diversity rather than fearing it. We pray for the thousands who have suffered directly with COVID and those who have faced financial hardship, anxiety and depression as a consequence. We pray for all who will struggle this Christmas because of changed circumstances and loss, especially the bereaved and those whose financial resources make a time of giving and festivity a painful challenge. We pray that you will bless all organisations which work hard to support those in need and bless us with political leaders of compassion, vision and generosity. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We pray for Stapleford and the neighbourhoods in which we live. We pray that they will be safe and friendly places to be, where people share their joys and problems and are ready to help others. Bless our shops, cafes and pubs, our schools and workplaces, our churches and homes. Bless those who care for those in our community, the health services, police, care workers and many others. Bless our churches over the Christmas period and every person who will visit and attend. We pray that they will experience something of your presence the joy of the Christmas story and love of Jesus in people they meet. In a moment of quiet, ask God to bless someone you know who will find Christmas difficult this year. Amen. Amen. And finally, a prayer for ourselves. Lord, it's such a busy time and yet it should be all about you. Help each one of us to make space for you in the week ahead, to worship you and bring the gift of ourselves. Use us to bless the people around us, the people we meet, sharing the love of Jesus to all who need it. In his name. Amen. Amen. Well, a big thank you to Karen for everything that you have shared there, Karen, this morning. Uh, lots for us to go away and think about. And thank you to everyone who has participated and contributed in this online service today. Just a reminder that the notices are attached to this email. So if you want to know what's happening in the life of the church and uh, looking at those upcoming dates and times for Christmas services and events, then please do have a look at the notice sheet attached. Right now, we're going to move into our final worship song today. I will offer up my life. So please do sing along at home.
Father, we thank you for everything that we have heard this morning. And we pray, Lord, as we continue in our Christmas preparations uh, in this period of Advent, that you keep us and our families safe, that you draw us by your Holy Spirit ever closer to your Son, Jesus Christ, and that you help us to shine as a light in the world for others, so that those around us may come to know the hope and love and salvation that we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.